How much risk should a fund take in order to generate returns? The most common way investors judge a stock or an ETF is by looking at its performance history. And the one that's managed to provide the highest overall returns is more or less a great choice. Now this may include dividends reinvested or just capital appreciation. And although this is true, it doesn't provide a full picture. You see, sometimes an investor or a fund may take on elevated risk in hopes of better or higher returns. Now, if they get fortunate, their results could be astronomical. In the world of finance, investments with higher levels of risk typically offer the potential for higher returns, while lower risk investments tend to offer lower returns. You can see that very clearly in assets like junk bonds. Now these are bonds that have lower credit ratings, meaning that they are more susceptible to default. However, in order to compensate investors for that elevated risk, they provide investors with higher interest rates. Investing in the stock market always carries a level of risk, and there are many different strategies that can be used in order to minimize risk. You see, at the end of the day, the real question is whether or not the risk that you are taking is paying off. So can you measure this? Yes, you can, and this is where things get really interesting. There are two really interesting metrics that can set two ETFs apart, and they are the Sortino ratio and the Sharp ratio. These ratios are financial measures that help investors assess the potential return of an investment compared to its level of risk. So in other words, they indicate how much return an investor is getting for each unit of risk that they take on. The Sharp ratio measures the excess return earned per unit of total risk. The Sortino ratio measures the excess return per unit of downside risk. So the Sharp ratio measures both the upside and the downside risk, while the Sortino ratio primarily measures the downside risk. When paired together, it provides investors with a more comprehensive understanding of an investment's risk-adjusted performance. These ratios are determined by taking the average return of an investment and subtracting the risk-free rate, then dividing it by the standard deviation of the investment. Now, if you want a full breakdown of this, I can do another video because it's just a bunch of math and it could get really confusing, but I highly suggest that you tune in for that video because it's really cool stuff. And in order to do that, you've got to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much. Let's move on. Here's what's important. If the value of a fund's Sharpe ratio is high, then it indicates a better risk-adjusted return. And similarly, if the value of the Sortino ratio is high, then it indicates better risk-adjusted returns. Now, the term high is relative. When you're comparing two ETFs side by side, the one with the higher numerical value is the one that provides better risk-adjusted returns. And if the values of these ratios are low, it indicates that the investment is not generating enough excess return relative to its level of risk. So essentially, the fund is taking on more risk than necessary in order to generate returns, and this is not a good thing. So as a result, funds that have lower Sharpe and Sortino ratios can have a tendency to underperform the overall market and may be vulnerable during periods of heightened volatility volatility and market downturns. As an investor, you want to make sure that the fund you're investing in is providing the returns that you expect in accordance with the amount of risk you're taking on. And this brings me to OMFL. And this is the Invesco Russell 1000 Dynamic Multi-Factor ETF. And this fund is really awesome and very smart. First, let's run through some fundamentals. This fund was established on November 8th, 2017, so it is relatively new, and it currently has over $3.5 billion of assets under management, which is fantastic. This means that the fund is growing at an amazing rate. In the fund's description, it states that it applies a proprietary index strategy to investing in large cap US companies. So what does this mean? The fund starts with the Russell 1000 index, which is an index that represents the top 1,000 companies by market capitalization in the United States. Then the fund assesses the prevailing economic environment and market conditions. So it looks at economic and market parameters such as consumer sentiment, construction activity, manufacturing gauges, and labor market conditions in order to determine whether the economy is expanding, slowing, contracting, or recovering. This chart gives you a better understanding. 
So during recovery and expansion, the fund targets company size and value, while during slowdown and contraction, the fund focuses on stocks with healthier balance sheets and reduced susceptibility to market swings. This is absolutely amazing and very smart. And what's interesting is that the fund gives each individual stock a score, or what's called a multi-factor score, and it will exclude the stocks that have scores that fall below certain relative thresholds. So to put this in a simple way, the fund is managed passively and consists of stocks that are in the Russell 1000 index, but uses factors like size, value, momentum, quality, and low volatility in order to evaluate them. And the fund is actually rebalanced every month. Now this is also very interesting because it allows the fund to keep up with the rapidly changing economic conditions. The fund currently has a beta of 0.97 and a profitability score of 9.66 out of 10, which is amazing. Looking at the fund's holding breakdown, you can see that majority is allocated towards healthcare, but it has a relatively even spread between technology, consumer defensive, financials, and energy. So it is a very diverse and well-balanced fund. And on top of that, no specific stock takes up more than 6% within the fund's holding, providing a relatively even spread of asset allocation with Apple and Microsoft at the top with 5.74% and 5.22% respectively. So with all that being said, how has the fund performed? Because really, that's the most important part. So let's take a look. And just an FYI, I will be using the inception date of OMFL for these comparisons in order to keep the timelines consistent. This chart compares OMFL with the S&P 500 side by side over the last five years. And you can see that the fund has outperformed the S&P 500 by more than 30%. OMFL has an average annual total return with dividends reinvested of 14.09%, crushing the S&P 500, which has a 10.84% average annual return. So an investment of $10,000 in 2017 would now be worth more than $20,500 versus $17,500. That is a very big difference. The fund has outperformed the S&P 500 by more than 18% in the last three years, and year to date, it has outperformed by around 3%. Now let's compare the funds side by side to other popular large cap ETFs like SCHD. And again, you see an absolutely amazing performance. OMFL has outperformed SCHD in the last five years by 25%. And in the last three years, it outperformed SCHD by 11%. And year to date, the fund has outperformed SCHD by a staggering 16%. Keep in mind that all these calculations do include dividends reinvested. Now let's compare the fund's returns to other popular covered call ETFs like JEPI and XYLD. Now we will be using JEPI's inception date so we can keep it consistent with dividends reinvested. From May of 2020, JEPI has returned 43.73%, XYLD has returned 31.38%, and OMFL has returned a staggering 62%. What's actually really interesting is that this fund has been the top performing large cap equity ETF with total returns over the last five years. Now, considering the recent inception date of the fund, it does have a low dividend yield of only 1.6%. But what's really important is that its dividend growth is astronomical. Over the last five years, its dividend growth is at 64.77%. And its dividend growth rate compared to the recent 12 month period is an unbelievable 58.32%. So its dividend is growing and at a phenomenal rate. You can see that over the last five years, it's been on an exponential upward trend with this yield taking a hit in 2020 because of the pandemic crash. Now the fund has an expense ratio of 0.29%, which is actually pretty good. And just for reference, for every $10,000 invested, you pay $29 in annual fees. And again, I say this in every video, the expense ratios are taken out of the fund's total returns at the end of the year, so you don't pay for it directly. So now let's focus on those ratios I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the Sharpe ratio and the Certino ratio. This chart shows the Sharpe ratio and the Certino ratio of OMFL compared to IVV, which is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500 over the last five years. And just as a reminder, the higher the Certino ratio means that the fund is compensating investors better for the level of downside risk it is taking. Now comparing the historical five-year Sharpe ratio and Certino ratio with SCHD side by side. 
you can see that OMFL takes the win again with a significantly higher Certino ratio and Sharp ratio. So in conclusion, this ETF can be an amazing addition to a portfolio because of its active management and the use of consistent monthly rebalancing that can help protect a portfolio and provide investors with amazing returns per unit of risk that it takes. And that is all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!